In this video, we are discussing vectors in Java. In the previous video, we have discussed array list. And vectors and array list are almost same, but there are some two major differences between vectors and array lists. So, let me go for further discussion. So, what is vector? So, vectors are also a dynamic array like our array list. That means, in case of vector also, we can go on adding our elements to the vector as when required. But it has got two main differences. So, at first we are discussing difference number one. So, vector is synchronized, but array list are not. That means that in case of vector, so vector objects will be created and methods which are there under this vector object can be called under this vector class can be called. But in case of multi-threaded environment, at a time only one thread can call these methods and that is why it is called synchronized. But in case of array list, in case of multi-threaded environment, we can have multiple threads can access the methods of this array list object. So, there is a basic difference between this vector and the array list. So, that is why it is our suggestion that for the single threaded environment, we should use this array list uh, for the multi-threaded environment, we can use this vector objects. But these array lists can in case of multi-threaded environment, we can use collections dot in case of array lists we can use collections dot synchronized list function to create a synchronized list and thus getting an equivalent array list which is equivalent to a vector. So, what is the function name we can use it here that is a collections dot synchronized list function. Okay. Now, let us go for the second difference the vector contains many legacy methods that are not part of the collections framework. So, that is a another difference between the vector and the array list. The functions of the vectors and the array lists are almost same. So, we have defined, we have discussed so many functions in the array list. So, now let us go for one practical demonstration where we will be using some methods from these vector objects. So, here is the demonstration for you for the better understanding. Here in this particular program, we have defined one num vector which is the object under the class vector and which will contain integer type objects. So, here you can find that it is containing integer type objects. So, integer is nothing but a wrapper class under which objects will be defined and that those objects will be kept under this vector object num vector. So, now we are going to add uh, some items to this particular vector object. So, num vector dot add, add is a method with the help of which you can add some items into this vector object num vector. So, here we have added say 5 such uh, objects and these objects have got added with this num vector. So, now if I want to print the size of this num vector, so that means the number of objects it is containing, we are expecting that it will print 5 here. So, let me go for the execution. Here you can find that the size of the vector is being shown as 5 because here we have added 5 objects of integer type. So, now we are going to uh, print all the members of this num vector. So, in that case, I have just, uh, just printed this one in this way the system dot out dot print ln numbers with a concatenation with this num vector that is a vector object. So, what is the outcome in that case? We are finding that we are finding this 10, 20, 30, 40 and 50 they have got printed. Now, also we can access this members using a for each loop. Just see here this is the integer class under this integer wrapper class we have defined one object that is a num and using for each loop we are reiterate we are through the iterations we are retrieving each and every element one at a time through these iterations and they are getting printed as a result of that we are getting the outcome that is 10 20 30 40 50 got printed in the separate lines because here we have used print ln function here so now we are going to add another uh, another integer object there is a 100 to this at the location number 3. So, subscript number 3 we know that in case of vector the subscript will be starting from the index will be starting from 0. So, as the index will be starting from 0. So, at the third index we are going to insert this 100. So, now later we are going to print this updated uh, num vector there is a vector object. So, we are finding that this 100 has got inserted at the index 3 here because 0, 1, 2, 3 at the third index the 100 has got inserted. So, now if we go on 
printing the size of this num vector now so I'm just copying this line and if I go on printing the size of this num vector so we are expecting that it will print now 6 because one new uh, object of integer class has got inserted here has got added at the index number 3 so the size of the vector object is now 6 in this way in this particular demonstration we have shown you that how to use vectors in our Java code. Thanks for watching this video.